Allison, are you ready to talk about the biggest bully on earth, Tom Arnold? Oh my god! happened we've seen it twice was it real it, it really doesn't feel like this movie <laughs> is real you're serious you can't watch this movie enough and it, you'll still think like oh, did i really watch a movie where rick moranis was being bullied by tom arnold that didn't happen i'm not a little kid anymore really well then how can you act like one i am not acting and so i am not and so i am not whoever acts silly gets to win willing Oh, you shut up, you big bully! This movie exists in a liminal space, along with like every mid-tier comedy you might have rented from the library, but you're like, I, I kind of have a vague memory of this, but... Yeah. Did it happen? No. No, it did not. <laughs> the end. So what's Big Bully, Phelan? It's a mess. It's a movie that stars Rick Moranis in this kind of sad drama. Maybe a dramedy if you want to be generous, but there's very little comedy to be found here. <laughs> it's just like... It's in the, the first half of It, the miniseries. Yeah, it starts off as <laughs> It, where they're kids. And you're like, okay, what's this building to? It turns out nothing, really. <laughs> The clown was us the whole time. Yeah, it's like it if the clown you know, was in your head. It kind of really does feel like it. Though at the beginning, even with Tom Arnold being the bully character, you're expecting that later he's going to be in an asylum talking to a clown face on the moon. The brief <laughs> overview of this movie is that Rick Moranis was bullied as a kid. As an adult, he comes back to his hometown. Tom Arnold is the adult bully. He bullies him. That's kind of the idea here. It's not really the execution. The reason that the beginning feels like it though, I will say, is because none of the comedy is actually comedy here. So mm -hmm. it comes off like the beginning of a lot of Stephen King projects where it's that kind of small town where sinister things are happening but people aren't really talking about it. You got these abusive relationships. When you're a marked man, you appreciate the value of a good hiding place. I spent the better part of my childhood sitting in the cave at Vermilion Falls. Teacher floating down the Delaware, chewing on her underwear. Ten days later, eaten by a polar bear. That's how the polar bear died. And that's kind of what it feels like here, even though this is supposed to be a comedy. Which is very ironic because they mentioned Stephen King in this movie. If you don't know what irony is, it's ironic, <laughs> according to IMDb. Well, he's also a writer who returns to a uh, small hometown. There's a lot of parallels here. It's a movie. parallel, not irony. No. <laughs> yeah, that Stephen King joke makes no sense. Well, it's uh, about a man who loses his family and finds himself in the process. No. I'm more of a Stephen King fan myself. Rick Moranis is a character named David. He is a successful writer, so we're told. But his introduction as a writer, we see that he's at a bookshop and no one is interested in his book. They all just want to read Stephen King, which doesn't really make any sense because it doesn't seem like he's a horror author. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they are in direct competition with each other. <laughs> You're in direct competition with each other. Fight, 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 fight. We love you both. You're not in competition with each other. Hey, you're in direct competition. Fight, 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 fight. Wow, great Simpsons joke, Phelan. Okay. First half of this movie is confusing to me because they spend... Well, a lot of this movie. All of this movie. <laughs> all of it. The entire thing. There's never a point where you're like, oh, I really get it. It becomes very <laughs> funny at the end. You're like, I wish I had been this the whole time. But there's never a part yeah. where you're like, oh, this really came together. No. <laughs> You see a kernel of an idea of what this movie maybe sort of kind of was thought of at one point in time, but somehow several drafts of something or other have come together into a confusing mess of a film. Yeah. They spend way too long on this intro with them as kids, but there's not really a lot of payoff. No, it's just, it's setting up that the bully character exists, Tom Arnold, like they knew each other as kids. It's, okay, this could have been gone through a little quicker though. It sets up this whole friend group, which you know is what makes it feel a lot like it, and you think it's coming to something. Thing. You see the grown-up version of all these friends, save for one, once in a bar yeah. later, and that's oh, it. Yeah. 
Yeah. They are gone. They're utterly unimportant. I will say, after watching this movie twice, they were setting up a lot of stuff in the intro that have payoffs later, but it doesn't feel like it does because nothing really makes sense in this yeah. movie. They do set up the main plot of it, which is that there is a space rock being brought to town and the space rock gets stolen by the bully. He ends up going to juvenile hall because of he steals it. They have the setup for the waterfall thing at the end. They, they do a lot of this stuff, but all the other stuff feels superfluous. It never really justifies the amount of time that they spend with them. And, no. and also there are things that seem to directly contradict it. Like Tom Arnold says that he was his best friend. You were my friend and you betrayed me! And at what point were they friends? <laughs> it just says you were my friend, but then like Rick Moran says, a friend's supposed to make you feel good. And he's like, because he bullied him so much. He's like, well, you must have been my best friend then. Cause you made me feel so good because I bullied you. A friend is supposed to make you feel good about yourself. Well, then you're the best friend I ever had. <laughs> this is a movie where you root for no one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like even Rick Moranis, his character is so weird. He's played very straight, but there's no comedy happening around him. So it just feels like the sad sack character. Mr. Larry? Telephone. It's the school. They want you to come pick up your son. One time, um, the, all this, the teachers were smoking, and then they smoke in his face, and he goes like... It's great to actually be in the teacher's lounge. When I was a kid, I always wondered what teachers did in here, and now I know. Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, you gotta admit. Go on. Lie to me. <laughs> There's a problem with like a lot of the jokes in this movie. They're very understated. Like he comes back to his hometown and finds out that the librarian still remembers he checked out green <laughs> eggs and ham as a kid and like he has some outrageous library fee. Green eggs and ham. It's 8,862 days overdue. So what were the late charges? At five cents a day, green eggs and ham is gonna cost me $6,886. I have no idea to be so much, I won't pay it. I'm giving this whole thing as a promotional expense. That's why I invited clients instead of friends. And it like does a crash zoom on Rick Moranis once he finds it out and you're like, you gotta be kidding me. You're serious. Yeah, like no one is doing anything over the top in that scene and they do that and that's the first time they do a, an incredibly over the top mm -hmm. moment in it. It's not like the rest of the movie prior to this has been that cartoony. So when it like we first saw this, we're like, what the fuck? Take off. Before that, the greatest comedy bits are like when Rick Moranis' son is telling him, like, man, you suck. That's why mom left. I want to go home. Well, you are home. Until when? Until I say so. No wonder mom left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, understand. I don't understand his relationship with his son at all, to be honest. Like, they're trying to do this switcheroo. In the present day, the mm -hmm. children of each of them have reversed roles. So Rick Moranis' son is the bully, and then the son of Tom Arnold is the one that's being bullied. Which is I almost something that the movie doesn't really do that much with it. No, it's, it's confused. But like, uh, the son that's the bully, his name's Ben. Ben? Big Ben! Freddy! And later on in the movie, Rick Moranis' character finds the other kid in a locker and gets him out, and he knows that his son is the perpetrator of this bullying. Atomic Wedgie. I'm afraid so. Ben? Uh-huh. So apparently this whole time he knew he was the bully, yeah. but there's no revelation of it. We didn't even realize he was talking about his son until we looked back yeah. at the scene. Hey, Kirby. Yeah? You know, you really shouldn't let Ben pick on you like that. Well, the scene because... makes more sense if he doesn't know it's his son, yeah. and there would have been like a big like revelation that my son's become the bully later. But yeah, the way he don't... talks about it, so blasé, it's just like, wait, he knew his son did this? Yeah, well, he's giving him <laughs> advice on how to not <laughs> be bullied by his son. If you stood up to Ben, you'd get creamed. Well, there's always B.O., body odor. You stop showering, you lose the deodorant, no bully in the world will come near you. At no point does he realize he is part of the equation here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should speak to your son about his bullying. Yeah. This scene does not happen in this movie. No, there's not even a light talk about it where he's like, hey, Ben, you could cut out that bullying. Yeah, <laughs> not even, like he just sits there like having conversations about dates with him. Please don't go out in public dressed like that. Victoria says everybody's gonna be dressed like this. You've got a date with a sex teacher? Oh, you're dating the sex teacher? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
His son, like, hates him, except when he's making moves with the sex teacher. And he's like, yeah, dad, I love you. And then it's like, oh, wait, their date's going poorly. I'm leaving to go live with mom. I hate you. I hate you, dad. <laughs> Gonna go live with mom. Good idea. Just one problem. We don't know where your mother is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I would be embarrassed too, because he goes on a date at the, I guess they're middle school, not yeah, elementary. This was her but... fault though. She's the one who sets this up. The school is putting on a Sadie Hawkins dance for the kids, and I'm gonna be one of the chaperones. Well, I was wondering, would you want to go with me? You're serious. And goes, yeah. dress like a cowboy, too. And then she doesn't dress like a cowboy. Real bully move from Rachel Haircut over there. <laughs> they go they go on a date at this middle school dance. Like, it's like, who, in what universe do your teachers go on dates at, at the school dance? Like, it's creepy. Mm -hmm. One of the really irritating things about this movie is, though, you can see all these directions where it could have worked as something, and just, they do none of them. They just have all these flat jokes until the very end where it becomes a slasher movie, which is the highlight of the whole thing. <laughs> ah! Tom Arnold, what the hell's going on? And of course, Steve Miner directed this, who's the director of Friday the 13th part two and three. <laughs> and he was also the director of Halloween H2O. And the first house movie. So he yeah. has like some horror credentials. Right. And he is an associate producer on the first Friday the 13th. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, you can tell <laughs> during these parts <laughs> because all of a sudden it turns into this dark comedy like the cable guy, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with the tone of the rest of the movie because that stuff's fucking hilarious. It's amazing. Welcome to hell! I'll be your tour guy! You're serious? There's a shot of Tom Arnold coming out from the woods <laughs> like he's Jason Voorhees. <laughs> Why couldn't the whole movie have been this? Like, ah, oh, it, it annoys me so much because the movie just meanders around so much, not doing anything with the people they have. Carol Kane plays Tom Arnold's angry wife. Honey, honey. Put honey on me, you're mute of my eyes, eh? I don't know what this movie thinks it's even saying about bullying because apparently Tom <laughs> Arnold thought this movie really has something good to say about bullying, which is apparently your life will fall to shit Unless you're a bully, then you'll yeah. take control of it again. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand what his character's arc is. He was a shitty ass bully as a kid who was like beating him up. Because he was at Juvenile Hall or wherever, he ended up becoming this kind of meek person who's kind of pushed around. And then when he recognizes David, he's like, I'm going to be a bully again. And then all of a sudden being a bully was good, actually. And then he takes control of his life. Davey. Okay, so I'm David Leary, all right? So what are you gonna do about it? You wanna hit me? Welcome back, Davey. By, uh, being an ass. Yeah, being an ass. He's <laughs> bullying his kids and his wife, and he's also, I mean, I guess he needs to I mean, assert himself a little bit. But then he's, like, threatening kids by, like, putting their heads up against, like, grinders and Oh, shit. yeah. There's a million <laughs> times where Tom Arnold should go to jail in this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, he would not get reported for trying to grind a kid's face off. This yeah. is in a full classroom. All the kids are watching this. This would get back to the parents very quickly that this happened. And if, if the rest of this movie had been, like, like the ending where it was kind of a dark comedy horror type thing this stuff would sort of make sense but it's frustrating because through most of the movie they're acting like this is a mutual bullying situation i've been running away from you my whole life i'm through running well, at least you had a life you ruined mine! At no point is he in on it. He's always defending himself against multiple attempts on his life. <laughs> multiple! Yeah. With witnesses! And everyone's just like, yeah, that was weird. I was always fighting. Can't you forgive and forget? <laughs> no! Send Tom Arnold to jail! Or fucking throw him off of a waterfall! <laughs> This needed to be a little bit more like cable guy dark humor in there. Yeah. It's it probably it might have still underperformed like the cable guy did initially, but yeah. maybe by this point people will be coming around. And have a cult classic it. status yeah, cult instead classic. of like I watched this as a kid, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, did this movie flop at like a budget of 15 million and it made two. I'm giving this whole thing as a promotional expense. That's why I invited clients instead of friends. <laughs> that sucks so bad. I bet most of it went to Tom Arnold. Yeah, ain't that a kick of the teeth? Wow, great Simpsons joke, Phelan. <laughs> this was Tom Arnold's big downfall year because he had this, the stupids, and carpool, which <laughs> landed him worse actor at the Razzies and the Stinkers Bad Movies Awards. What in the world? I think he's tied with Pauly Shore for the Razzie, but he won the Stinkers Bad Movie Award all to himself. Father, tell me, when can I leave to be on my own? What in the world? He's definitely deserved it in many productions. Oh, man voice, you are nature's greatest wonder! I mean, my shows weren't great, but I never tied people up and forced them to watch. I don't necessarily think this movie is no. his fault, but I do think it speaks to the popularity, the enduring love of Rick Moranis, that he's one of the two mm -hmm. stars of this film, does not end up on the stinkers, does mm -hmm. not, like, everyone else is like, we love you, Rick Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, thanks, I'm out. And yeah. that's, this is his last theatrical movie. <laughs> Yeah, he did one live action movie after this, which was Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, which was a TV movie. And then that's when he started doing a bunch of voice work, starting with that Rudolph movie, yeah. where he's the toy taker. Stunning. <laughs> like you were saying before, it's weird that everything is played so straight you don't get the comedic bits. It's because Rick Moranis is playing a straight man against nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's why none of the jokes are landing. Like all these things seem really bizarre. Like people are reacting to him like he's doing something really bomb bombastic and crazy, like especially Curtis Armstrong's character, who I, I do not understand in the slightest. Are you on medication or something? I'm telling you, the guy is flicking peas at me. You're making me very nervous. <gasps> Get away from me. Clark! I can explain! What? More peas? He's supposed to have some kind of issues going on with him, apparently, but he thinks there's something really wrong with Rick Moranis because he tells him that Tom Arnold flicked peas at him. One of our own teachers is behaving like some high-strung fourth grader? But why? Crack. David Leary's gotta be on crack. More peas! <laughs> I don't believe you! This teacher's gotta be on crack! He told me so it flicked peas at him! <laughs> He's in another movie from everyone else. <laughs> There's a bunch of people in different movies than each other. <laughs> There's so many parts in this movie where there are clearly witnesses to crimes occurring and mm. people are just like that crazy Rick Moranis. Crack. David Leary's gotta be on crack. It's really sad is like Jeffrey Tambor is, it's you sad he's in the, It's yeah, really sad really Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tambor. Tambor. <laughs> it's sad he's there, but it's also sad because his character does have some of the funnier bits in the movie. He does, yeah. Put on a few extra coats, otherwise the moisture is going to seep into that wood and rot it from inside. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. You betcha. No wonder Mom left. Now, wait a second. That is not fair. Don't you fret, David. He just needs to get acclimated. He needs to get involved in some extracurricular activities. He does have some really funny lines in this. He was also originally supposed to be the principal, but there was like some scheduling conflicts. Rick Moranis tried to get Mel Brooks to play the principal at one point, and he wanted to do it to help out his friend, but he was kind of busy filming Dracula Dead and Loving It at the time, which is how we ended up with Don Knotts in the role. Don Knotts apparently doesn't age, and maybe that's a joke just because there's one bit where rick moranis the first time he sees him again as an adult he looks at him and then don knows like hey what he's like oh, nothing and like i guess that's a joke about the fact he he's a vampire what no, nothing what are you looking at nothing sir I, I think the idea was that it's crazy he's still alive because in the flashbacks in the 60s they were making jokes about he's so old and he's deaf or something or whatever with the moon rock stuff. But the old man was deaf or something. I'm deaf or something! I would become a real writer. And then he's still the principal there and still a very old mm -hmm. man. It's barely anything, adult. almost every joke. It's just so oh, yeah. flat, you're like, Oh, that was a joke, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it took us a second to realize what was happening there. We're like, what? <laughs> the first time we watched this, I didn't even catch that they showed Don Knotts in the past. So I was just like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward interactions. <laughs> yeah. There's kind of a lot of that in this movie. Just like, oh, that was a little awkward. I guess we're supposed to be busting a gut over that. <laughs> it's about a guy who loses his family and 
Guy loses his family. Oh. It's it's a book. It's like Pet Cemetery. It's exactly like Pet Cemetery, but a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first moment that genuinely made me laugh was when he's talking to his friend Ulf, the <laughs> firefighter. They're the doing a fire drill. Yeah, and then in the background, like his arms on fire, yeah. and he's like running around <laughs> to no comment. Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. He's one of the few characters that actually works. Like, mm -hmm. if they had been in this dark comedy, could have been something yeah. more. I just, I so wish this had been a dark comedy. There's so much potential there. They just cut this kid stuff down. Who we were talking about when we watched it, there was a potential for the kid stuff to have an actual payoff and to have that look at both sides thing. We could have seen the flashbacks from Rick Moranis' character's perspective where clearly Fang is the bully. And then in the present, Tom Arnold tells his side the story and we see that oh Rick Moranis actually did a bunch of shitty things to him which kind of instigated the bullying right okay well we see why this guy hates him so much but instead it's just like nothing it's just oh this guy is really unstable the moment he sees Rick Moranis he wants to murder him like at no point does it seem like Rick Moranis is in the wrong he does say some kind of dickish things like he's making fun of his neighbors for talking about the weather I don't think we need cable we got the weather channel living next door at one point he calls himself the home Hometown hero. If I don't see some marked improvement on your part, we'll find a substitute to finish the semester. But I'm the town hero. What an asshole. I feel like that's got to be like from a draft of the script where his character comes back and is like egotistical and another version where it makes more sense why this guy gets bullied because yeah. he comes home and he's a jerk. Yeah, he just seems like a perfectly reasonable cool guy when clearly he's supposed to be losing it through this film. My phone! I don't see your name on it! Ow, sissy. If he had maybe tried to get revenge on the bully and then show, you know, like, bullying for bullying isn't gonna get you anywhere, and then the kids are like, hey, you can, like, make up like us, fine. But when the kids say, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we made up, why can't you? Me and Ben made up. Can't you guys do the same? This is in the middle of the second serious murder attempt. There's quite a few uh, quite a murder few. attempts. Yeah, there's in been this a movie. lot. Yeah. This is after Rick Moranis thinks that he's murdered. He's been chased down with weapons. A nail gun shot at him. Uh, this was insane. It's one of the ways this movie could have worked is if all this Tom Arnold going after him in the present was in Rick Moranis's head. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it just was like crazy. Yeah, he's just losing it. So if you got something to say, say it. Otherwise, quit following me. Drop your pen. Yeah, and that would validate Curtis Armstrong's reaction if nothing really <laughs> was going on. It's just like he thinks this guy's still bullying him, but he's not. Well, if he was losing it and he also seemed crazy, I think it would have made it work, but it doesn't because mm. he he doesn't tell anyone that crimes are happening. That can't be too good for your rims, buddy! Well, he's been picking on me. Picking on you? And how does he pick on you? Hey, buddy! How you doing up there? Is it warm in here or is it just you? Well, he shot peas at me at lunch. People see Tom Arnold's character chase him into the hallway and then slam his head into a locker. He's chasing him so fast and like they're wrestling each other and all this other stuff is happening. But then he goes to the principal and he's like, he's bullying me. How many peas? Three. I see. Not, he attempted to assault me. He's been doing, like, multiple yeah. people. Well, other people have he gotten He slashed hurt. his tires by this point, he too. He slashed his tires. There are all of these actual criminal things happening. He only thinks to call the police when the last attempted murder is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during that. I should call the police. Like, no, you should have done that several days ago. Yeah. I gotta go to the police. Ah! No! It's just me and you, Davey. Just like the good old days. It was so good. It worked for me! They want to talk about another way this movie could have worked, because there's one point where Tom Arnold tries to prank Rick Moranis by putting some oil on the floor so yeah. he'll fall and hurt himself. And he just gets some random teacher or secretary, whoever she is. But, like, everything in this movie, it's a very flat joke, and she's like, oh, I'm annoyed. And he goes, oh, oops. Ah! Oh! 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Becky if he was trying to yeah. get Rick Moranis and just kept getting other people, like Rick Moranis is kind of just like the road runner, kind of walking through it and getting away all the time. <laughs> Maybe that could have worked. Or if she hadn't encountered Tom Arnold after that, she encountered Rick Moranis and thinks that he's doing it. And so some of his pranks get blamed on him. Then yeah. it would make a little more sense why people react that way. She acts mad at Rick Moranis because mm -hmm. Tom Arnold says he was looking for him. Helen, could you get me the test booklet from the- Get it yourself, uh, David. Tom Arnold throws the TV in the lake at one point, but he's kind of justified because the bushwhackers were on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> They're credited as being in this movie. You have to say archive footage yeah, at that point. Yeah, they are not in this movie. <laughs> Don't besmirch the bushwhackers by saying they were a big bully. They were probably doing family Much matters at the time. Higher comedy than, yeah, family matters. <laughs> Let's finally talk about the climax of this movie and what it should have been the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this it's... is fucking fantastic. So they decide they're gonna meet up at a seesaw in the middle of the night, as mm. you do, to hash out their issues. And Tom Arnold finds out that Rick Moranis ratted him out about the moon rock thing when he stole it, and he decides he's gonna go just ape shit on him. <laughs> and that's when the extended horror scene happens. Yeah, and this one takes place at actual night. There's one scene where Tom Arnold is stalking him down the hallway <laughs> during a very fake night because it's like the brightest blue shining yeah. in all the windows. You see the sky behind Rick Moranis <laughs> at one point. It's kind of extra funny because he goes home and talks to his bully kid. Where are you going? The park. It's dark out. Yeah. That's what happens at night. Not at the school, does no, it? No, at the school there's a nuclear holocaust, so it never gets dark. <laughs> <laughs> and then Seesaw with the crappy nuts joke. Yeah, the least funny nut shot in all of cinema. <laughs> Big mistake! It's like, because this movie doesn't know when comedy happens, so it's just kind of like, ow, and then they move on. We know the director can do horror comedies especially because house is one of the best horror comedies ever like mm -hmm. there's like a a balance there that is not present in this film there had to have been a lot of issues going on with what drafts they had what tone maybe the studio wanted something different i don't know but this was drastically different than the rest mm -hmm. of the movie but if you want to see rick moranis in a slasher movie <laughs> where tom arnold is jason Voorhees, watch yes. like the last part of this movie because it's amazing and shut it off when Tom Arnold falls down the water. Yeah, if you just shut it off and you ha the credits roll, that's the perfect ending yeah. to this film. That is how this movie <laughs> should have ended. <laughs> Yeah, the rest of the movie should have been this, because it is hilarious, and I wanted to see a slasher movie where Tom Arnold is trying to murder Rick Moranis. <laughs> you ever been to hell, Davey? I have. Except they didn't call it that. They call it the Rochester Reformatory. It's where they send murderers who are too young to go to prison. I had to tell them that I was in there because I stole the freaking rock! He's just completely snapped, I guess, at this point. It's like, it's one thing that he's like, yeah, I'm kind of getting control back by bullying him, which is nonsense, but okay. But he's like, yeah, I'm gonna murder him. That's fine. <laughs> like, I guess he's just hoping this whole town will see Rick Moranis dead and be like, mm. <laughs> He was in the right because he stole the moon rock because he wanted to be an astronaut, okay? <laughs> this means that they were both right, they were both wrong. <laughs> Cancels yeah. each other out. I stole the moon rock because I wanted to be an astronaut. You will perish in flame! <laughs> this was clear to the kids, too. Is your dad home? No. Is yours? Uh-oh. You thinking what I'm thinking? 
Yeah. Uh oh, we know what that means. I guess he, my trying to, trying to kill each other. your dad yeah. on a waterfall. <laughs> Let's have a sleepover. Rick Moranis goes in the it cave for a little bit, is expecting <laughs> yeah. like, the spider to come out. Maybe a Tom Arnold's Tom head. Arnold's <laughs> head comes out. He finds his old action figure. That's an evil Knievel action figure. And Isn't I guess that the drummer from Guns N' Roses. What you got? It's an evil Knievel doll. Who's that? He was the original drummer of Guns N' Roses. You can't stop. <laughs> That's a joke in this movie. Why? <laughs> and yeah. It's set about with the same comedy punch as I delivered there. <laughs> Funniest thing in this movie Rick Moranis fucking throws Tom Arnold off a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> shot terribly 90 shot of someone on a green screen ah. yeah falling down from the camera <laughs> amazing it was so good there is another part where this movie could have really worked after this because rick moranis tries to turn himself in then he runs into his friend Ulf, who goes what are you doing out here Ulf, i did it did what i stood up to fang it was so hard no oh, i killed him i took a piece of driftwood and i hit him and he went over he's dead Get in the truck. I'm gonna cover this up for you. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the waterfall, find the body, and get rid of it. I'm gonna drop you at home, and I'm gonna go back down to Old Mill Park to look for the body. I'll take care of the evidence. Yeah, okay. Ulf, never seen again. Never, never seen How did again. he not follow up on that? <laughs> That's insane. Why is this guy like such a good friend to him, too? Like, oh, you killed someone. All right, I'm going to cover it up for you. Like, and that could have been a whole movie there. They, like, skipped a bunch of the BS at the beginning. Like, yeah. done a lot more of this dark comedy where Tom Arnold dies halfway or three quarters through the movie and the rest of it is them covering it up. That could have been really funny, too. Like, and then they were the big bullies all. Love yeah, <laughs> there's such a wasted potential in this movie and with this Ulf character. There's something there. There's funny moments with he, him he like had, this. He had, a, he had a couple genuine laughs from me. They kind of set him up. He's the only member of the friend group who is of any importance. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's kind of a pyromaniac despite being a firefighter. I guess yeah. that's the joke. He's like setting a napkin on fire. He <laughs> sets his arm on fire. Don't forget his one friend who could put his fist in his mouth and then he did it again as an adult. So yeah. some payoff. <laughs> they mention all this stuff about how Jerry's father owned the butcher shop on Main Street. Alan was the only black kid that we'd ever seen. He could do that stuff, and it was they were friends with this this kid, yeah. and then that character doesn't matter. No, like they you add don't all of see this backstory, again. and like th there's nothing to that. Pretty dry out there. But yeah, Tom Arnold is not dead. He shows up breaking and entering. Add that to his list of many yeah. crimes. <laughs> <laughs> if this was just a Friday the 13th fake out at the end. Like, <laughs> he, he, he goes to the bathroom and he jumps out of the toilet. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> sh <laughs> if he was waiting in the shower for him, covered in mud and like, ah, like that would be hilarious. It almost goes that way because Rick Moranis puts his head on his pillow like he's trying to go to bed and then Tom Arnold drips on him. Ah! I'm back! Big Bully 2! Which they really wanted to make a thing. They really were going to make Big Bully 2. Are we really going to New York City? Well, that's why they call it mobile home, son. Bullying in New York, I guess. <laughs> we don't know that Big Bully 2 won't happen because Rick Moranis is getting back into live action yeah, stuff. So after he's ready. Shrunk. Big Bully 2. Yeah, he's ready after the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show <laughs> part two, because there was another one. <laughs> we once, forgot about that one. <laughs> we forgot about that one, but, you know, I think Big Bully 2 is coming. You guys ruined this perfect ending if he had just died falling down the waterfall. It would have been hilarious, but I do think it would have been a really good punchline if Ulf had showed up and said, like, all right, I got rid of the body. Yeah. It's cool. And then sees Tom Arnold still alive. So. Yeah. And like you're saying, it should have been Curtis Armstrong. <laughs> Strong's character that they yeah. hint that he got rid of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like missing posters for him and last seen in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I found the body. He was still alive, but I took care of him for yeah. him. Who? <laughs> I mean, we never see him again, so maybe. Maybe. That's a headcanon what happened yeah. <laughs> at the end of this movie. There's a really funny bit after Rick Moranis thinks he's killed Tom Arnold. He comes home and then <laughs> Jeffrey Tambor is out there pruning his hedges or something, being a creep because it's midnight. <laughs> Don't you sleep, Art? He didn't. He goes like, oh, I did something really bad to him. He just goes, you killed the shop teacher. I've done something really terrible. You killed the shop teacher. How do you know that? Oh, uh, you know, it's hard to say if you're a murderer. It depends on your perspective. It's about semantics, isn't it? I remember the first time I tried to kill Betty. 
What? That's his wife. <laughs> and by the way, we never see Betty again. <laughs> so it's like, did he kill her? <laughs> did some? Is there something else going on here? Like, there's these little moments like that. You're like, oh, there's something there. Yeah. They sort of had a movie here. It just never came together. Yeah, they just need to hit more of those dark comedy beats. And instead it just did these dull things constantly. You're like, oh. All right, don't utilize anything. You do you, movie. But yeah, Rick Moranis apparently takes the lesson, you should make up with your bully, but also I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. One, <laughs> one semester <laughs> one into semester teaching. In. <laughs> He's like, after one semester, I was fine. I'm leaving. And with the semester coming to an end, it was time to move on. <laughs> I couldn't even finish out one year. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. Even his voiceover is just like, I gotta get the fuck away from this guy. A future without fame. But the big punchline at the end is Tom Arnold and his family are also going to New York. <laughs> but at least he got together with the sex teacher. You can pay me back when I come to New York. I don't see this relationship last. Nah, she stayed in that town her entire life. She's <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Not gonna work. Oh, we forgot the funniest joke in the movie when uh, Rick Moranis orders uh, a Corona with lime or something. A uh, Corona with a lime, please. <laughs> You're just the fuck like, was that? That's a record scratch stop <laughs> moment to you, movie. Really? <laughs> okay then. <laughs> I want the dark comedy version of this movie because it could be amazing. It's the role Tom Arnold was born to play, baby. <laughs> I believe that Tom Arnold could murder someone. Because <laughs> I'm a big guy and I'm good with knots. It's uh, probably his best cast role, honestly, was yeah. Big Bully. <laughs> it's like, it's confusing how he gets there, but once he goes into slasher killer mode, it's the best. <laughs> I just want Tom Arnold as a slasher killer. Yeah. This is you and me, Davey. Just like the good old days. Are you crazy? You went past the Red Rock! This was many different movies. One good movie and several very, very mid-tier bad movies. Mm -hmm. I'm just confused as to like who this is for, what the message is. It doesn't seem to know what it's saying about bullying at all. No. It's like, yeah, bullying is good. It helps you take control of your life. Is that what you're trying to say? Um, no. Bully bullying is uh. good, and also the ones that are bullied are mutually culpable. For yeah. all of these things, you're actually responsible for the yeah. people that traumatize you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I deserve it. You, you should try to kill me, because, yeah. I mean, look at my face. It's hard to get with Rick Moranis in the role. Maybe if his co-winner of the Razzie that year, Polly Shore, played the character, you'd get, okay, yeah, Polly Shore comes home. You just want to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Polly Shore deserves it. Polly Shore? Wow! We should do a show together, man! Wow, great Simpsons joke, Phelan! We already got a big bully, too, with that guy that punched Rick Moranis in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Rick Moranis is a national treasure is the thing. International treasure yeah. everywhere. No one hates Rick Moranis except that guy that punched him. And it was Tom Arnold and that's why oh, no! Rick Moranis hates Tom Arnold according to Tom Arnold. Where did that occur? If it was in New York, we know. We know the whole story. <laughs> I think it was in New York. Was it in New York? <laughs> Big bully too, guys! This movie bullied its audience. <laughs> That's why everyone stayed we, away from it. We were being bullied. This should just be called Big Attempted Murderer. You can't really call him a bully anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, would you recommend this movie to anyone? Just the last quarter of it. <laughs> yeah. If you watch maybe a short film version of this, where it's just a horror movie, it's pretty damn good. The rest of it, it sucks. Yes. I wouldn't recommend Skip the that. rest of them. You're serious. Just for Rick Moranis and Tom Arnold and their little slasher movie at the end, <laughs> that is worth it. The rest, stay away from it.
Oh, just put like Stephen K- Simpsons. Oh, what? <laughs> what? What Simpsons joke is this? It's when Bart and Lisa fight each other in the hockey, and then oh, okay. Like Marge tells them you're not in direct competition with each other. Then they find out their teams are facing each other, and Homer comes in. You're in direct competition with each other. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I'm gonna cut my explanation out of that. Just pretend that I knew what it was, and then I'll be like, wow, great Simpsons joke, Phelan.